Goedemorgen, welcome back to another video guys. We are gonna be starting the fourth day of hauling the slop out of those corrals. Uh, we got two corrals left, yesterday we did three, so today we should be able to get it done. We also gotta clean out one of those calf rooms later on today. But uh, before we start this case loader, we're gonna check the oil quickly, which is not the most convenient thing in the world. It is cool to have a, a fancy hood like this loader, the electric lifting hood. Just goes up with the switch there. But what ends up happening, you gotta open that up and wait for it to be able to check the oil. Which is good. Goes all the way up, it's pretty nice. But now you need to hold the switch down because it doesn't click down and wait here for it to close again. But So now you're here holding the switch waiting for it to close just because you had to check the oil. It's not the end of the world, I guess, but a little bit inconvenient. Nice. So this case loader was not plugged in this morning and it's probably minus 10 degrees, but it should fire right up. This thing's pretty good like that. So the glow plugs on this wheel loader just automatically turn on. You can see our yellow light there. A lot of newer equipment just automatically fires those things up. So there you can see it's minus 10, it wasn't plugged in. Those glow plugs, they fire and it just starts right up with almost no hesitation, which is pretty crazy. In. You guys saw it struggle quite a bit to start up. That was some gnarly diesel smoke, that's for sure. <laughs> These are the last two curls we got left. This is number eight and this is number nine. And they are open together, which makes it easy to get the one out. We're just going to put all these ladies in here and get going. They definitely do not like walking over this stuff. Luckily, there's only two curls left until that's done. This stuff is really frozen though. It's definitely as cold as it has been since we started cleaning these curls out. It's been getting like minus 10 overnight and it just hasn't been thawing out at all during the day. We've been sitting around, you know, minus two, minus three degrees. So we'll see how it goes scooping it out. We might have a bit of a, a tough time with some of that material, but uh, there's only one way to find out. So at the end of every day, I try and open and close the gate a bunch to make sure it doesn't freeze open but it did today still. So it's kind of stuck. It goes a little bit more closed than this, but I need it to close all the way for the road. So we're gonna have to go over to the vet room, use some hot water, spray it on the track where the door moves up and down in, and hopefully get it figured out. Ooh, that's hot. Okay, I think we did a good job heating those rails up. See if it goes all the way down now. Well, that worked perfectly. Just lost another 15 minutes of the day though. This is by far our smallest corral and also our most difficult one to back the wagon into. Had to go back and forth a few times, but that's all right. First load's ready to go to the field, but it looks like we're starting to get an issue on our wheel loader here. You guys probably noticed it already. That tire is going flat. We are cleaning one of our calf rooms out this morning, right there. And they just moved the calves over from this barn to the rental barn there. Now they're scooping the bedding out. We do that with the skid steer. 
But since we're hauling solid manure anyway, we back the wagon right next to the concrete pad there in front of the calf barn so we can scoop directly into the wagon with the bobcat. It's kind of efficient like this. Then we can spread it directly on the field. It works pretty good. That skid steer is definitely fully extended when you're dumping into this wagon, but it's pretty cool that it works. Since they're using the manure wagon over there, I can't haul right now anyway. I'm gonna take this wheel loader back over the shop, put some more air in the tires. We talked to our mechanic. Apparently you can run these tires at a few different PSI levels. They were at about 40 to 45, and then they're a little squishy. The ride is a lot more comfortable in the cab of that loader because the tires kind of absorb some of the bumps. It smooths them out a little bit because there's less pressure in there. But you can put them up to 60 apparently, so that's what we're gonna do now. Just kind of uncomfortable with how much they're bulging all of a sudden, so. Back to the shop, put a little bit more air in them. So to be expected, from the shop to the corral here, you can feel it's way rougher riding in that wheel loader. But uh, we got a full bucket here and it's almost still round. So that's what we wanted to see. It's just safer. Uh, we want to take it easy on those tires. They're definitely not a cheap item. Well, today's turned into an awesome day. It's the first time we've seen the sun in like a week out here, but uh, we're working on the last Corel. And there's a reason I saved this one for last. It's because I knew this was going to be the least fun one to do. Look at all the water that's still in here. So in the back corner here, right in front of the straw pack, we were running this sump pump trying to pump as much of this liquid out of the corral as possible before we started scooping it, but it froze. So we weren't able to do it anymore. It's kind of froze in the ice now, but I think it's liquid enough to try and get this thing to go again. So we're just gonna scoop, I think that muck out over there. There's no point trying to scoop all this water out. It's just way too much. There you go we got it out that there is just your standard sump pump we're gonna try to drop this back down in there it looks like the bottom is pretty free i'm gonna plug it in and see what it does well i was hoping to take this thing and turn it on again and start pumping this liquid but that whole entire black line there is frozen so that's definitely not gonna happen today we're just gonna have to wait until a warmer day let that thing thaw out So we're all done this corral now. There's obviously a lot of water still left in there and the deepest spot probably a foot deep at least. So I almost got it in my boot again, but I did try to get that pump going, but we saw it was all completely frozen. The pipe was frozen. So unfortunately we're just not gonna be able to get that thing running until it warms up a little bit. I think in a couple days we'll be able to. We're gonna let those ladies back in this corral now. It's the next day. We finished all the corrals yesterday, but we still got some mucking around to do today. So this is corral five, the bigger steers. And unfortunately this spring when everything melted, a lot of the kind of slop from this corral seeped into our chute handling system here where we were parking all the animals while we were cleaning those corrals out. Uh, this front pen was so bad, we didn't even use it to store the animals in. So this morning we're gonna try and clean this up. When we built this alley, we kind of figured we would be doing this someday, scooping a bunch of crap out of here. So we put gates on both ends of this alley, just so we could drive straight through with the wheel loader, make it easy to clean. And those gates are right at the back here. So that gives us access to this alley from behind the corrals here. Should be easy enough. Pretty tight with the wheel loader though. Grab the wagon, parked away over there. Got lined up with the wheel loader at this alley. We do not got a lot of room at all. That'll fit right there. 
Oh, that's doable. Should should be able to get through here with this wheel loader. Okay, well, we finished up pretty much all that I can with the wheel loader, so I was gonna grab the skid steer. I also was gonna move the tractor a little bit closer for the skid steer, because I don't wanna drive as far with that thing. And as soon as I hopped in that Versatile, started to drive forward, it stalled out on me. There was a big lump of manure right in front of the wagon tire, and that kind of held it back a bit, and I was starting in a higher gear, gear seven. And it hardly stalled, but it did stall on me. But that's okay, usually you just turn the ignition off, and you fire it right back up again and then you're good to go but for some reason the batteries on this thing are dead now we replaced the batteries on this tractor probably a week ago not even something else is wrong with it i guess because those batteries should be uh fully charged especially when they're brand new like this if it's not one thing it's the next and if it's not that one it's 10 other things but uh we got the charger extension cords we're gonna send a booster over to that tractor and get her fired up again Well, we got a little luck so far. We were able to get it hooked up with just a single extension cord. Makes cleanup a lot easier. I guess I got it on medium for a 12 volt battery. And then we'll leave it like this for a little while and then we'll come back in a bit and then we'll put it on start. So that's basically the same as just running booster cables off another vehicle. This is attempt number one. Nice. Tractor's going again. We opened up all the gates and we also grabbed the skid steer. It's time to get in there with this thing and try to clean out as much as we possibly can. We were working away with the skid steer, scooping those little pens out there. It was going pretty good but there was just a couple issues with the controls of the skid steer. So the way you move the bucket and the arms here are with your feet. There's pedals under here. You obviously drive with the sticks here, forwards, backwards. And then you can see the pedals down there, and that's how you operate the bucket on this uh, skid steer. But there was just too much uh, crap and manure built up underneath there. They were moving pretty slow. And it looks like they're pretty rusted as well. So we got some spray here. This is uh, rust prevention, kind of lubricant stuff. I just did the one pen and it was kind of fatiguing already. I got three more to go, so I figured better make it a little bit uh, easier going right in the beginning. The nicest thing about doing a week of field work with the tractors is that you can come back to the milking parlor when you're sick of it and start milking cows, which is what we're doing this afternoon. We're milking with my big sister, Nalene, this afternoon. How's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> I always love seeing the comments of people thinking I'm the big brother and you're the little sister. That's not actually how it is. <laughs> I'm three years older. Three years older than me. So I'm the little brother. As you guys right? can see, she's way, way. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below and I hope to see you guys in the next video.